Awesome. Well, it's one o'clock, so we'll go ahead and get rolling here. My name is Mackenzie Bergenbach. I am the Marketing Creative Director here at Rhinogram. And we just want to say thanks so much for joining us as we take a deeper dive into Rhino Forms. Um, it's one of our features that's had the most hype and we're really excited to share it with you today. So if this is your first time learning about Rhino Forms, or if you'd just like to have a refresher on the functionality, we hope that you leave today with the information that you need to help digitize, digitize your forms and signatures. Thank you so, so much for being a part of our herd. We just really appreciate you and your attendance today. So a few housekeeping items to go over before we get started here. Um, first, we will have a dedicated time for questions and answers at the end of the event, but feel free to put any questions in the box during the webinar. So there's a questions box that you can drop those in there at any point. Um, there is also a handout section for you to download a one sheet on Rhino Forms as your little take home sheet. Um, secondly, we want to hear from you guys. We always love hearing from you guys and we will have a poll during the presentation and we would love for you to participate and to see what you're looking for in regards to e-forms and digital signatures. Next, this session will be recorded and sent out to you afterwards. So feel free to share it with your coworkers, your staff, your doctor, all of the above. Um, and lastly, and maybe most importantly, we will be sending out those Starbucks gift cards at the end of the presentation today to all attendees. So without further ado, I would like to introduce you to our fabulous panelists. You can see them here. Um, they'll be walking you through our presentation. So first up will be January Paul. She's an implementation specialist in our customer success department, and she'll be walking us through how to create and store forms. Thanks January for being here. Um, she will then pass the mic to Allison Paulini. And Allison is also an implementation specialist and she'll be walking us through how to send forms to both groups of people and individuals. So thank you so much ladies for being here and let's jump right in. January, the floor is yours. Thanks everyone um, and welcome everyone. I'm January and I'll be walking you through how to create and store forms in your organization library. Uh, when you guys add Rhino Forms, one Rhino Forms admin seat is included. This is the person that can add and edit the forms. Additional seats are available if you would like to have more than just one person um, adding those on. So to get to your library, um, you will click on the gear icon on the lower left-hand side of the screen. This will bring you to the settings menu. Then you'll click on library in the navigation bar on the left-hand side. The library houses both your customized templates as well as your created forms. You can navigate between the two at the top of the screen. You'll always be brought into the templates first, um, then you can click on forms. This will bring up all of your created forms, those that, have that been sorry, those that have been published, as well as those that are still in draft form. To create a new form, just like in every other section in Rhinogram, you're going to click that green plus button on the upper right-hand side. This will open up the forms builder. First, you'll need to select how you would like to create your form. You can either start from scratch and build the form directly in Rhinogram, or you can import a PDF of a form that you've already created. This option does work best with PDFs that were created in Adobe. For this first example, we will import a PDF form. You will need to give each form a unique name. Then you'll be able to upload the chosen PDF from your computer. For customers with select integrations that allow writebacks, they will have the option to choose to send the completed form back to their contacts chart in their EHR or PMS. This is a brand new feature that was just released this last Friday. When the PDF has been uploaded, you'll see the original PDF on the panel on the right and the converted PDF on the left hand side. Once the PDF has been converted into the digital form, you will then be able to edit it in the form builder. You can upload your logo at the top of the form. You can also move around the individual form elements and change the ordering of those elements. There's also the ability to edit each element. You can change the label alignment, you can make different elements required, not required, etc. 
You'll also have the ability to add on additional elements that may not have been in your original form by clicking the Add Form Element Plus button on the upper left-hand side. There are many, many elements to choose from. You can scroll, scroll through them and view them all on the left-hand side. One thing you will need to make sure to add is a Submit button at the bottom of your form. This is from the Add Form Element section. Your patients cannot submit the form without this button. Once this has been added, you can either save as a draft or save the form. If you choose save, it will publish the form immediately, meaning that your uh, staff can send that form out right away. Forms that have been saved as a draft cannot be sent out to your patients just yet. Once it is ready, you can then publish it from the summary on the right if you didn't click save in the previous screen. Now let's walk through creating a form from scratch. I think this is really easy and really fun and it's a great way to get a completely customized form. Same thing, you'll have clicked that green plus button to create the new form and from here you will select the start from scratch option. You will give your form a unique name and then begin creating form. You can then begin editing the form, adding your logo at the top, adding as many form elements as you wish. You can choose to make some or all of the elements required, and don't forget to add that submit form button at the end. You can also create page breaks if you're creating a longer form to create distinct sections, such as one page for demographics, one page for insurance information, one page for medical history, etc. One of my favorite form elements is an input table. It's great for the medical history section and dental history section. Uh, you can add conditions as the rows and answers as the columns. Yes and no are shown here, uh, but you can edit them to say anything you want, such as never experienced, have in, or am currently experiencing, have experienced in the past, NA, etc. Um, you can add as many columns and rows as you need. Now I'll hand the bike, mic back over to Mackenzie. All right. Hello again, everybody. So at this point, we're going to take a little break here and do the poll, participate in the poll that we had talked about earlier. So I'm going to launch the poll and I'll give you guys a minute or so to pick which one most resonates with you. And then we'll look at the results and then I'll pass the mic back off to Allison. So let's go ahead and get into this poll. So what would you like to solve most with Rhino Forms? Please select one of the following. Do you want to decrease intake time? Do you want to store digitized forms? Or do you want to mostly collect e-signatures? I see the results coming in. Keep, keep voting. We got half, about half the crews voted so far. Give it a few more seconds. It looks about 77% of you have voted. I would love to get up to 100. Let's see what you guys think. All right, I'm gonna give it about 10 more seconds here. All right, let's look at the results here. I'm gonna close the poll. Look at that, decrease intake time. Okay, so a lot of you guys really just want to <laughs> remove that administrative burden and decrease it all um, in terms of the overall process of intake. That's awesome. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and um, make Allison the presenter here. Hey, Allison. <laughs> oh, I'm not muted. Okay. Hello, everyone. Give me one second. Let me get everything shared and we will move on. All right.
All right. Awesome. Well, like she said, I am Allison. I appreciate you guys joining us today. Um, let's go ahead and jump into the next part of sending those forms once they get created. Um, so once your office has created all of your forms, it'll be time to send them out to your patients. You can do this two ways. Either send the form individually to a specific contact, or you can run a glass the forms to a list of people. When you're sending to someone individually, there are two ways that this can be accomplished. Either create a template and attach a form to it, or just send the form on the fly. So let's start with that templated message. Um, the form would have already been attached at this point. You're all familiar with creating templates in the library. Um, if you're not, go ahead and pop a question into the question bar and we can answer that later. Um, once you have that uh, template complete and ready, as always, you're going to initiate the conversation by searching for that person in the top of your screen. Once you've selected the correct contact, click the plus sign in the message bar and select use template. This will bring up a list of all of your templates. You can tell which ones have the form attached by looking under the files column and seeing the signature icon. The templates will always display in alphabetical order with your favorited items at the top. And then to favorite an item, just click the heart icon on the right and it'll pull it to the top of the list. From here, you'll be able to select the templated message that you want with a form attached. Just like normal, your scripted message will automatically load into the message bar. And what you may not have seen before is the form link will show in blue under the message. Don't forget, from here, you can still tweak the text to be specific to the patient before sending. Once everything looks good, click send, and you're done. So now let's go on to moving, uh, sending forms on the fly. If you don't need a templated message included with your form, then you can skip creating anything in the library. From that plus sign in the message bar, you'll select send form. This will bring up a similar list as your templates and you'll choose which form you want to send. You can still include a message or just send the link, whatever is appropriate for your situation at the time. No matter which way you choose to send a form, once it is sent, an action item will automatically generate in that patient's feed to show that a form has been sent by which employee, and it'll also have a timestamp. Like any of our other add-on features, you can keep track of the form status from the patient's summary on the right. When the patient or guardian opens the form on their mobile device, it'll look similar to this. They can fill it out directly from their mobile device or hit share and send the link to their email to complete the form on a desktop or a device with a larger screen. Whenever I was working in the office, this was great for our older patients that struggled with seeing the screen of their phone or getting the um, keyboard to go up and down at will. When the form is created by a patient, it will automatically be sent back to their library and a new action item will be generated in their feed showing that it is complete. If you're not in that patient's feed at the time, because we don't expect you to sit there and stare at people until their form is done, um, you will also get a notification that the form was completed so that you know to go and process the form. Straight from the action item, you can click on the link to the completed form. Completed forms are stored in the contacts library automatically, and that will be under the completed forms tab. While selecting the form that you are ready to process, you'll have the option to view the PDF, download the PDF, or for those with an integrated EHR system, you'll be able to send it straight to the patient's uh, file in your system. There's also the copy to option, which will let you put the form into another person's library. So for example, if mom owns the phone number but has three kids, then you can copy the correct form to that child's library. That way in the future, if you go and reference the form, you don't have to click through the different ones with the different kids information. You can get child ones forms right on a command. All right, so option two is sending the form out via a rhinoblast to a list of contacts. Sending a blast can be accomplished through either saving a, using a saved list or through the appointment manager. 
With each, you will still have the option when forming the message to either send using a template or send the form on the fly. To send a form using the same saved lists, you will click first on your contact icon on the left, then on the tab labeled saved lists. From here, you can either use a list that is already formed or check the green plus button on the right to create a new list. When creating a new list, select the contacts that you would like to send the form to. Give that list a unique name and select the green save and message button on the right. This will bring up a similar message box as what you would have seen in the individual profile page. From here, craft your message by either using a template or the send form option. Now for the appointment manager, which was always my favorite. For those that utilize the appointment reminders, you are already familiar with this page. You can target all patients that are coming in on a given date and send a rhinoblast to the patients that will be in your office soon. To do this, just select the box of the patient on the left that you need to send the form to and use the bulk action message contacts on the top right. This was a lifesaver for those COVID screening questions in my office. Again, you will now have your list of contacts that will receive the message and your message box with the plus sign to craft your message. Choose the template or form that you want to send. Then take a final look at the message and choose confirm message to send. So then now what happens? You've sent all these forms, but you need to get them back and process them. But all the forms that have been completed will automatically show up in that contacts library. There is no sorting, it comes back and puts itself where it should be. To find them, go to the contact, click view next to library and navigate to the completed forms tab. You can also see a report of all the forms that have been sent from the Rhino Forms Manager under the Settings gear icon. So you would go to this tab. Um, this will provide a consolidated list of outstanding Rhino Forms. You can see which form was sent, when, the current status, and for what contact. You can also filter your uh, statuses to show who has completed their form who has had a form expire, and who has not opened their form or completed it. For some exciting news that we have, um, the Rhino Forms Manager screen that you just saw is getting a facelift soon. So pretty soon it will look like this, and there's gonna be even more options available, such as a hyperlink to the form, the status of whether it has been written back to the EHR PMS system, and my favorite, for those completed forms, you can get them all right here with a link to the PDF on the right. Soon, you're also going to be able to send a rhinoblast from this form or from this screen. So those clients that have not completed their form in a timely manner, you can go ahead and send it to them again straight from here. No more having to make a list from this screen and then going to the appointment manager to send the blast. And for those that are not integrated or use appointment reminders, this will be a whole new way to send blast messages to people with upcoming appointments without having to cross check with your EHR systems first. All right, now I'm going to hand it back over to January. Thanks for your time, guys. Hi, everyone. Slide, please. So here we have Dr. James Thomas. He's a pediatric dentist who with using forms was able to decrease his intake time from 29 minutes to all the way down to three minutes. Ed has been able to treat 5,000 families with only two team members, which would not have been possible without Rhinogram. Slide. Here are some helpful video links uh, to our videos about Rhino Forms, the Rhino Forms Builder, and the Rhino Forms Manager. In case you guys ever forget any of the things you learned today, or you would like to watch just a little shorter video for a refresher, these avail these are available through these YouTube links. They're also available in the help desk articles. And now we're going to open it up for questions. Awesome. So I'll invite Allison back up. So 
I do see a few questions that have come in during the time here. Um, so let's go ahead and hit some of these. Um, Elizabeth says, I don't see the forms option under my username. Why might that be the case? If you're uh, speaking about the Rhino Forms um, manager, um, your office may not have Rhino Forms yet. Um, the, we do need to enable the Rhino Forms on our end once it's been added onto your contract. Um, everyone will be able to see the Rhino Forms manager. Um, for the person to actually create new forms um, underneath the library tab, um, only, well, with the uh, add-on, it comes with one Rhino Forms admin seat automatically. Uh, each office can add on more than that. So if you were to go into your library, you clicked Forms at the top next to Templates, and you don't see the green plus button up on the top right-hand side, um, that would be mean that you were not made the Rhino Forms admin. Yep, which we can easily fix that for you. Um, next question, is there a limit on the number of forms we can create? No, absolutely not. This was always wonderful in my practice. Um, you can create as many forms as you want to. I know everyone has different needs, so everything is customizable. Awesome. Um, how do we tell our patients that we now have digitized forms? That's a great question. Uh, we always suggest um, we have signage uh, saved in our help center. If you uh, search the word marketing, um, there is an article in there with a zip file that has uh, signage that you can post, things on your Facebook page, um, all sorts of different things like that. Um, so when you post that you are textable, if you are new to Rhinogram, you can also let them know that you have digitized forms, um, as well as when you are taking those intake calls, the new patient calls, or when you're scheduling people who will need to fill out a form, uh, letting them know either via text or uh, on the phone that you'll be sending them those forms uh, digitally so that they can fill it out on their phone before their appointment. Awesome. All right, we have another question. Can you add discrete information to a form like dates of procedure or amount due? Um, yes, yeah, so I actually just worked through this as a workflow. Um, I have an office that wants to send contracts and as everyone knows, um, contracts have specific information for each client. So what we did is we created a template for the contract. And since they all have the same um, sections in there, um, we just highlighted. So whenever they want to send a form to a specific person, so for example, this is January's contract, then you would uh, duplicate that form and label it January, um, and then fill in her information and send it on to her contact. Awesome. Okay, another toughie here. Is Cloud9 an integrated system? Right back. <laughs> so uh, we would be happy to discuss all, uh, you know, any particular program about their right back capabilities and all of those things and what those integrations entail. Um, if you could send us your email here uh, in the questions or in the chat, um, I'd be happy to reach back out to you and go over that further with you. Awesome. We got these questions are rolling in. Okay. Um, that was another one. What EMRs do you integrate with? Um, I'll let you guys answer that too. I know it's similar, but we have a huge list of integrations. Um, so same thing, write your email in the chat and we'll get back to you um, on your specific integration and what that looks like. Really, all of our relationships with the different EMRs are different because they allow different things, right? And so we would love to have full open gates, API gates with every single person, but sometimes they limit us on what we can write back and whatnot. So we wanna give you the correct specific information for your EHR. Um, let's see. Um, I'm assuming since I don't see the forms button, I'm, I'm guessing she's saying that this is not a part of our contract. How can I find out? Um, I'll just say too, you can drop your, drop your email in that chat and we'll reach out to you on what the status of your, your forms seats are. Okay, sibling forms. Is there a way to make this process easier? We found parents have to complete one form, they get 
then get they send oh sorry then get sent another link is there an easier process yes i actually spoke to our product team about this and you know we're always coming up with new ways to deal with this um one of the easier ways that they explained was rather than waiting um you can actually move the phone ownership um which you guys if you guys have uh connected parties you're probably pretty used to this um so normally we tell you to leave it on the parent right because the parent is the one that physically owns the phone um but in order to quickly send the form out for multiple children you can actually move that phone ownership to child a send the form for child a reassign that phone ownership to child b send the form for child b so it is two separate links it is sent to the same phone number but because it's on different contacts it's different links and they can uh, fill them out awesome um this says for the patients who don't have the capability to use forms via text what would you suggest as a backup we do have the ability uh to create a link that you can email to the parent. Um, we have written instructions for this. So if you need those, um, same thing, pop your email here uh, in the chat, or you can um, you know, text us at the support number and we can get those instructions over to you. Yep. Um, is Rhinoforms an extra charge per month? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Allison, we're all nodding our head. <laughs> yes, it is. And um, we can absolutely follow up with all the questions on pricing with you guys after the webinar. Um, we like to record these, so we don't want to say a price now and ever in the future it's changed and this webinar is obsolete. So we want to give you the correct price and we will do that after. Um, okay, let me see what else is on here. Is there an option to send you our forms and you create them for us? We generally don't do that. Um, if you need some help with it, we can, we'd definitely be happy to kind of walk you through that. Um, it's, I promise it's once you get in there and you do, especially if you're going to create them from scratch, creating from scratch is so, so easy. Um, every time I do the trainings on these, um, and then people finally get in there and play with it, they realize how simple it is and actually how quick it is compared to, um, especially if you're trying to import a PDF that was not created in Adobe, um, like maybe it was a Word document that was just saved as a PDF, because it's not a true PDF, it doesn't always import quite as prettily as we would like. Um, so sometimes starting from scratch and making them yourselves are a little bit easier. Awesome. Okay, so this is, I just noticed a follow-up question to Jennifer's question before. Her question before was, can you add discrete info into a form like dates or times, procedure, amount? And then let's see, she said, so everyone would need a specific form as her follow-up question for the discrete information? Yes, right now that is the workflow. You would just copy them. Um, you would clone the form or clone the template that you make and label it with that person's information, send that form specifically to that person. Um, I have spoken with the engineers and they are working on a way to make that workflow a little bit simpler. Um, it's coming in the future. We're not exactly sure what that's going to look like because they have to figure out how to do it. So uh, when we get an update on that, we'll definitely let you know, but they are working on how to make that workflow a little bit faster for everybody. Awesome. We just have more and more and more. Okay, hold on. Let me get back up. Here. Bring it on. <laughs> okay. Um, I got that one. Got some people dropping their name in and what they're interested in. This person says, would love the instructions for creating a link to email new patients. Thank you. Heart emoji. So we can get that out to you. Um, this one, when the form comes back, is there a way to have it named so we know what patient it goes with when we save it to our computer before importing into our PMS Cloud9? If you choose to download it rather than writing it back directly, you can okay, change so there is a way to yes. have it named. Yes, to have it named. Otherwise, um, the way that all of our write backs currently work because um, all of the 
uh, EHRs that do have the write back capability, they have uh, a requirement that is currently, um, they require that each individual file is slight, is, you know, unique. And so the way that we got around that is by, it says rhinogram hyphen, and then has a bunch of characters after it. So that's how we know and we make sure that every single one's unique so that it doesn't, you know, mess anything up when it's written back over. So if you specifically want to put the patient's name in or what the form name is, I would suggest you can download it and then change the name. Awesome. Okay, we got some more people letting us know to email them about integrations and pricing. Um, here's one. How did you add an additional seat as an administrator? Oh, that's really easy. You just um, let us know that you need that. Uh, it's uh, something we would add onto your contract and uh, Allison or I could get that turned on for you like that. Awesome. My coworkers really want to know if you're going to implement emojis into the texting module. <laughs> um, so that is a, a current enhancement request um, that is on the list. Um, there is a way around this currently though. Um, I know for sure if you use a Mac, um, I, on my computer personally, like in your settings, you can set it up so that you have like a short key. So I use the function key because I don't really use that for anything else. So I use my function key and I have my emoji keyboard attached to my function key. Um, so uh, you can just use a shortcut like that. Um, if you use a Windows computer, you can actually also download the emoji uh, keyboard and you can bring that up and you can utilize that. Yeah, and I would, I love these like requests and like feature enhancements coming in because I would, I would like to add to that. I spoke with our VP of product yesterday and he was super interested in what you guys wanted and what you're interested in and any feedback on forms and other things like emojis because we know emojis are important. <laughs> um, okay, is there a trial where we can try it out without committing to this feature? Not currently. I don't think we have that currently, um, but I would say if you want to hop on a call with success and we can kind of show you around and like have your own, you know, yeah. figuring it out yourself. Yeah, your own demo of it and figuring it out yourself and seeing if that's something that you would like to implement. Absolutely. Okay, Jennifer, back to her follow-up said, sounds good, thank you. Um, okay, next question, Lakin, how quickly are you able to send forms to new patients? Our front desk says it usually takes a minute or it takes a while to get a profile created in Rhinogram once inputted into our software. So if you have an integrated software, um, it does, it, it varies uh, based on which software, how long it takes for those profiles to come over. Allison, do you want to explain what we did at our practice? Absolutely, I'm gonna jump in. Um, so you can uh, merge a integrated profile with a profile that's been made manually. So that was always my workaround. Um, we used Cloud9 in my office before they started the 15 minute syncs. Um, so when I got a new patient, I would just create them manually, put their stuff in and send all their stuff, start their communication, open that line immediately. And then whenever it would sync at night, um, the next day they would have an integrated contract or contact. So then I would just merge those two together. So that way it was on me and I had control over the duplicate that could show up in the system. Awesome. Yeah, it depends um, on if you want to create it yourself or not. <laughs> yeah, but once you get used to that, honestly, guys, it took me 15 seconds to create a new contact rather than um, like texting success and asking them to do something or to update a phone number um, instead of waiting for the sync to happen. Like I would rather be it be on me personally. So if I can do it in 15 seconds and not have to talk to someone else, then that was my choice. Totally up to you guys and your workflow though. Awesome. I see Dr. Razai here. When can we add forms to our website? Question mark, smiley face. <laughs> oh, good question. Yeah, that was that awesome. is something that everybody wants. Um, we are working on it. I know I've had so many conversations as well as January with the engineers. Um, it's coming again. They're just figuring out how to do it on the back end and then we'll make it available as soon as we get it. 
but great, great enhancement request. Okay, um, Jen DeMarco, can you show where you can have the patient fill out a form you sent them while they're physically in the office? Question mark. So generally it's um, really easy to just have them fill it out on their phone. You just, uh, so say they forgot to fill it out ahead of time, that link is still active as long as it was sent within 30 days. Um, if, you know, maybe it got buried in the conversation and they can't find it, you can just resend it again. Uh, when you resend the link, the old one does expire, but the new one works. Um, and so then they can just fill it out in your practice. Uh, I know at our practice, we had like a guest uh, Wi-Fi that people could log into to make it a bit faster. Awesome. Okay, this is just another email for a write back question. And then let's see. All right, April, is there a reminder feature for the sent forms, like an automatic daily reminder for those who haven't completed the forms yet? There's not, not that yet, yet, but that's it. I was going to say, what are we doing? They're like, let's do this. So great. <laughs> great <laughs> suggestion. <laughs> um, I would say, right, you can go back into the manager and see that at a at a glance, but not a reminder. You're right. It's Yeah, it's not an automatic reminder. You could be, go into the Rhino Forms manager and see who has not yet completed it. And then you could click on that person's name and send them a little reminder text. Um, but yeah, it's not automatic, but that's a great enhancement request that I had not heard yet. Yeah, and Allison, would with the new setup here, that would be easier to see everyone who hasn't completed yet. You could send a blast to them and remind them that way. It's not fully Correct. automatic yet, but definitely getting more seamless, I would say. Um, okay, what is a write back from Kristen? A write back is when Rhinogram will take the information that we got. So when a form comes in, if write back, write back capabilities are a, available for your system, then you click a button and it automatically. So for Cloud9 specifically, because that's what I used, um, you had something called a document cabinet where you would put patients' files in Cloud9. So when you click that write back button um, in Rhinogram, it takes that form and puts it into their document cabinet in Cloud9 without having to download it or save it to your computer and upload it somewhere else. It just makes that uh, workflow seamless. Yep. And I see here, I'm going to assume this is a follow-up to this question of what is a write-back. Is there a separate cost for that? Certain practice management softwares do charge us, and so there is there is one off the top of my head that I know for sure we charge for write backs on. Um, if you would like to let us know um, which software you have, uh, like you know, send us your email and let us know what software you have, um, and we can you know get into that with you and see if write backs are available for your software um, and if there's an additional charge for it. Awesome. Okay. I just got confirmation that follow up was in regards to adding another administrator. Is there a cost to that? Oh, yes. <laughs> okay. It's so less than adding on the, so Rhino Forms itself is one fee, and then it's a much, it's a smaller little add on fee to add on some more administrators. But you also have, uh, you know, unlimited functionality. You can make unlimited forms. So, think about that and think about how you want to optimize it. And you might need multiple seats. You might not. Um, okay, let's see. If you use the app, you can add emojis. That's a good point. So if you're using yep. Rhinogram mobile app, you absolutely have emojis right there handy. Okay, if you use your phone, emojis work from Dr. Dressler, you're right. <laughs> um, let's see. Is there a way to add Rhino forms to more than one user? I think we've said that, right? Yes, there is a way. Um, User, I'm not sure. User, do you mean member like of your organization or user, do you mean end user as a patient? Yeah, can we get a little bit of clarification? Alejandra. Let's see. Um, I can go ahead and answer. If it is for a patient, you can send them multiple forms um, at one time. You get different links for each form. So if you need to send them the new patient paperwork and a COVID screening form, send them. 
Okay. Follow up to Jen DeMarco's question of, can you show where you have the patient fill out a form you sent them while they were physically in the office? She said, if they are having trouble seeing it. So maybe if they're having trouble on their phone, is there a way that you can show them the form? I don't know if she means on your computer, maybe Jen. Um, so if they were having trouble viewing it, like if their phone connection wasn't good, um, that was where I do suggest having like a guest Wi-Fi if it's possible at your practice. Um, Cause like that definitely did make it easier in our practice. Um, Cause sometimes, you know, being in a building will slow down your cell phone connection. Um, so sometimes it will be a little bit quicker on the Wi-Fi. Um, if you mean, can you put it on like an iPad or something? Um, you can, um, it's, it is possible. Um, it's actually a teeny bit easier if you email it, um, or you can, uh, you know, we'll, we can send you those instructions on how to email it because they may be able to view it easier at the link from their email versus from their cell phone, maybe, in, if they're having bad connection. I hope that answers your question. If not, let us know and we can try to elaborate further. Yeah, we can definitely follow up. Okay. Um, do you think there will be a URL we can create for people to just scan with their phone and fill out? That's a good thought. Like a QR code? Yeah. Um, that's that's also a good uh, enhancement request. We can definitely bring that up with the product team. Um, Love your suggestions. This is great feedback. So yeah. that's kind of related right now to um, getting a link for your websites to put them on. Um, I know the hurdle that we are currently jumping is when we send the link right now, it's specific to that patient and it puts it straight into that patient's library, which cuts down on your workflow. Um, if it's a general link, then we don't have anywhere to tell the program currently where to put it. So it would have to all come into one inbox, which would clog up your workflows. Um, so once they get over that for um, the website links, as well as the QR codes that will be released. Like I said, everybody wants it. So we're definitely working hard on getting that one out. Okay, so we had the follow up to from Alejandra. Is there a way to add forms to more than one user? And they said member of an organization. Oh, so the Rhino forms admin. Yes. So um, those are based on seats. And so uh, with the Rhino forms, uh, add-on feature one rhino forms admin seat is included um, and additional seats are available as well so and you can switch it from sorry you can switch it from one person to the other it's not a set in stone once you put it on there so in our practice january made most of the forms that we had but if i needed to go in and tweak it we didn't need this question anymore whatever we could switch that admin right to me and then i can go and edit it or create something new or like if someone's out on like vacation so or like i was out on medical leave for six weeks so i had to give all my permission stuff over to allison uh because i was out of the office for six weeks so somebody else needed to take over that okay dr dressler said that is coming with automations not sure what you're referencing because i'm trying to get through all these but oh he's talking about the i think he's talking about like the QR code slash link for the website. Awesome. Okay. Um, I would love to learn more. We'll get it to you, April. Okay. Um, Jen said, on your computer in the Rhinogram portal. Hmm. Then she said, we have patient Wi-Fi, but filling out the medical history on the cell phone is not always easy. We want to know if there's an option to bring the form up on our computer and have them fill it out on the computer. They're not always willing to fill it out on their phones while in the office sometimes, or it is difficult to do on a phone. We have had, um, we had an iPad at our practice, so it was kind of our last resort, but we have had people like send, we'll send it via email and then they'll just log into their email on the iPad so that they can pull it up. You just have to make sure that they log out afterwards. There you go. Um, I think we're almost there. Let's see. If we go under the text and rhinogram and click on the form, it does not allow you to fill it out. 
Right. So that link that it sends uh, is when you click on it as a member, it pulls up the generic form, not the fillable form. Um, we like, I, I don't know if I, I think I mentioned this earlier, we have the uh, instructions from the engineers on how to get the actual URL that we're sending to the individual person. Um, so we can, if you need those instructions, um, let us know, we can send those to you. Um, and that would be the URL that you could bring up on the iPad or that you could email to the person or whatever. Um, it's because the URL is distinct for each form and for each contact that you are sending it to. Okay, Alejandra, yes, we will have this recorded and we can send it out. I'm sorry that you got, if you had trouble with Allison's section. Okay, let's see. Um, Dr. Dressler, I was talking about notifications on who hasn't filled out the forms is coming with automations. Awesome. Yes. Okay. Um, Sherry, my daughter Grace is visually impaired and she would send to her computer and fill out and then she submits it and it goes back to Rhinogram. Okay, so there's, there's another option there. Um, let's see. Okay, that answered the question. Okay. We would like those instructions for the URL. Got it, Crystal. We've got Stevie who's working behind the scenes copying all these over for you guys. Thank you, Alejandra. Okay, any more questions? I think we got through a lot of them. You guys are awesome with all of these questions and, and enhancement requests and all the above. This is exactly what we wanted, this collaboration and to hear from you guys. Yes, thank you so much. Lakin, can I have URL instructions? Sure. Um, awesome. Okay, if you don't mind going to the last slide here, Allison. All right. So, I mean, we've talked about this a lot in, in uh, our questions section here, but if you want to add Rhino Forms or if you want to add seats, just reach out to this email here. It's on our contact page on our website. It's really easy, success at rhinogram.com. You probably already have our number saved in your phone and you probably text us all the time. <laughs> That's great too. You can text or call us um, if you would like to add any of this on. So I just wanna say um, a big thank you to each and every one of you. We know you are so, so busy and we're just so grateful that you carved out some time to improve your practice today. Kudos to you, right? Um, so we can't wait to continue to share all the new enhancements that our team's working on to keep eliminating that administrative burden. And we wanna do that so that you guys can focus on what matters most, which is caring for others. We wanna care for you so you can care for others. Um, that will conclude our presentation today. We're just a little bit early. If you have any more questions, please reach out, success, text us. We're so, so thankful you're here and we'll go ahead and close it out. Thanks everybody. Thanks guys.